Hey y'all, welcome to Adventures with Aggie brought to you by Coco's Coffee House. Today we have our second episode of season three featuring Nick Turbide. He's a para swimmer on Team Canada and he's going to share his story growing up in para sport and how passionate he is about para sport and the Paralympics. Please welcome Nick. Well, Nick, how are you doing today? Doing well, how are you? I'm good. Thank you so much for coming on the show. I'm excited to get to know a bit more about you and your story. Um, but first, can you just kind of give me some background on who you are and what you do? Yeah. So my name is Nicholas Turbine. I'm a Paralympic swimmer. I've been going at it for the past 11, 12 years, I think. And uh, yeah, um, I, I was eligible for the Paralympic program because I was born with oculocutaneous albinism, which is just fancy words to say that I, I lack pigment in my eyes, my skin and my hair. So that comes with the visual impairment. And uh, I guess that's something I had to learn with to, to live with on, in my everyday life. Definitely. Can you kind of tell us, I guess, a little bit for the people who don't know about the classification system within the Paralympics? Yeah. So the Paralympic system is a, a, a way to make the, the playing field equal for everybody. So there's going to be a different classifications for different types of impairments where you'll have physical, uh, visual, sensory, and um, uh, intellectual impairments. So we have different categor categories depending on the severity of the impairment. So I'm considered to be legally blind, but I'm like on, on the limit of being able to see like someone normally so the, the best way I could explain my vision is uh, if we were using a, a, a camera on the phone well sometimes we try to take a photo and there's a lot of movement or a lot of light uh, and my eyes are just going to struggle with that they're not going to be able to focus on somebody or an object uh, if I need to find someone that I know well in the crowd that for me that's the hardest thing because uh, there's so much going out, uh, like going on around me that uh, my eyes just can't focus on one thing and they'll be distracted. And, and uh, on top of that, my eyes can't really zoom on things. So I, I can't see from afar. So I have to be close like this when I read a book or look at my phone. So, uh, so yeah, but there's a category for, for people like me in the para world. And there's a category for actually so many uh, types of impairment more than what people actually think since it's it's I mean it's very inclusive it's made we imagine that it's somebody who's completely blind or in the wheelchair uh, but that's just not the case uh, it can be a minimal like physical impairment uh, just an amputated arm or even just an, a hand or a couple fingers uh, to uh, severe uh, cerebral palsy or, or and everything in between definitely this is why I love the Paralympics because it is made for everybody which I don't think, kind of like what you're saying, I don't think people know that, or I don't think that maybe everybody understands how inclusive it is, right? And I think that's so cool, but. No, and that's the thing. Um, I, I think as a Paralympic athlete, that's what we want to push forward. And I think that's what the general population are, are aware of is that it's, it's a movement where we want to succeed. We want to be the best at what we're doing, just like the Olympics, except everybody's eligible. Everybody can take a part in it. Everybody has a shot of, of doing their best and achieving their goals. Definitely. I love it. I love it. Let's kind of, I guess, backtrack a little bit into your story. Um, why swimming? How did this become your thing? <laughs> okay. So it's a bit ironic since when I was a kid, I was actually afraid of the water. And I think that has to do with my impairment. Um, like when I was five or six, my parents decided that it was a good thing for me to just get in the pool and learn how to swim and just for my own safety, if I one day fell in the pool or fell in the lake or, or whatever, just me being able to, to actually take care of myself when I, I was in a situation where I felt uncomfortable. And I remember like every Saturday morning, my parents would bring me to the pool and I was just crying not to go. I uh, this was the last thing I wanted to do. I was afraid of what I couldn't see in the pool, like the bottom of the pool, the, the walls. I was afraid, afraid of just going out on, on a swim in, in the ocean. For me, that was the most terrifying thing since, like, I mean, I wasn't aware of what was going on around me. Um, so, so the thing is, I wanted to be a golf player when I was a kid. So my, my parents are big golf addicts and I just wanted to do exactly like them. And that's why I did for five, six years until I was 10 or 11, until the day they told me that, if I wanted to improve in golf, I had to, to just improve my, my physical abilities. I was a skinny kid, uh, probably like four foot two, four foot three, at like 10, 11. And uh, I needed a way to just get better physical abilities. So 
they tried again in the pool with me and uh, this time started competitive swimming. And I think that's when I realized that my desire to win and to beat people around me was just stronger than my fear of the water. And when that clicked in, I kind of realized that, yeah, swimming is maybe this, maybe is a sport for me because, because when I was golfing, I, I always needed to be with somebody else, somebody guiding me and just having that independence and autonomy being by myself in the pool that was so rewarding especially as a, a young teenager and I, I just kept going that route and it brought me here today <laughs> I love that that's so cool how that kind of worked out for you but I guess what a follow-up to that what when did you realize that this was what you wanted to do professionally like was there like a moment where it clicked and you're like oh I want to do this yeah um I'm I was surrounded uh, with many athletes in my family, like sports has run through many generations. And I knew I wanted to be on top of my game at, at, in something, in the one sport. And I, did, I didn't know which one when I was younger. Um, and I wasn't a fast improver in the pool. It took me a lot of time to just get better at it. Um, but slowly but surely, I got introduced to the, the Paralympic system. And, and it taught me a bit more about like the opportunities I could have in that program, even if I considered myself somebody who could compete with all the able-bodied athletes, which is something that I, I strive for every day. Like uh, here in, in national championships, I, I try to be as good with the able-bodied athletes as with the, the pair of swimmers. Because for me, it's just the rewarding thing. Like, ha, I can't see what you can and I'm still beating you. So something to cheer, like <laughs> to cheer on for and, and something motivational, I guess. Uh, but I think just my dream of being able to compete with everybody and maybe reaching one day the Paralympics uh, came in 2011 when I I was just on on very close to make the national uh, junior team uh, in, as a para swimmer and I remember just seeing my teammates qualify for the big games in London uh, both Olympics and Paralympics and I, I think that's the day I realized like wow well, maybe that day, that person could be me one day and uh, I. I I'll try to work as hard as I can to just reach that level. That's it's so cool. I think that's awesome though. Having like every people on your team, right? Like your teammates and you're there to help each other. But I think that kind of friendly rivalry that definitely helps. Yeah. And I've been really lucky to be in a program where all para athletes were included and we were training, training along Olympians and, and other Paralympians. That was just, just the most motivational surroundings you could have. Like everybody were, were trying to achieve their best and, and uh, surpass themselves and, and reach their goals. So, so for me as a kid, that was just so inspiring. And I, I, I just wanted to get along and do the same thing. <laughs> Definitely, definitely. While we're talking about training, let's talk about what you're doing now. Um, obviously, COVID training, I don't know how that impacted you, but I know lots of pools were closed down for a while. Um, so I guess, how did your schedule change? So when uh, COVID hit in Canada, I remember like it was yesterday, it was on March 12, 2020. Um, and we were just coming back from a training camp in Florida, actually. And we landed in Canada at 11.20 a.m. And at 11.30, everything was closed down. So uh, we didn't have a pool to train in anymore. Uh, we didn't have a gym. We, we were stuck at home. We in quarantine, couldn't do anything. Uh, so I guess I had to sit down with a piece of paper and just write down my goal for the next day like what am I going to do to stay in shape what am I going to do to get ready for Tokyo and then at that time Tokyo was still up in the air we didn't know what was going to happen with the games and uh, one day they announced they were uh, they were postponed so we had to to build up to that new plan and and create a, a, a brand new strategy for the next year and a half which we're still doing today so uh, for a couple of months, actually in Canada, I didn't have access to our pool. I started training maybe three months later. So uh, my coach and I sat, uh, had a chat on the phone with my strength coach as well and, and made sure I had a, a good uh, dry land program that I could simulate a bit when I'm doing the pool because one of the most important thing in swimming is that the feeling of the water. You lose that so quickly when you have to train a lot that um, just missing one week or two weeks uh, out of the pool it's basically one to two months of, of just getting back to the level you were before so imagine three months it was basically well catching up with with so much or just getting back to that level took me a long time but but uh here we are today with i, I guess i'm swimming in my best 
I've ever swam before. And, and I think I'm just ready to head to Tokyo with, with good performances. I'm ready for you to go to Tokyo too. I'm so excited. <laughs> but um, what is, I guess, what kind of is your timeline from now until Tokyo happens? So because we haven't been able to compete at all in Canada since March 2020, actually my last competition was February 2020. So nothing else to compare. Wow. So between February 2020 and Tokyo, there would have been no competitions at all, which is something we, we didn't expect for us. Uh, so in, in my case, we're doing a couple of time trials and training, which is was just a competition simulation that we're doing just to keep ourselves motivated and, and have a baseline on where we actually are and making sure we're on the right track. So I uh, might do a couple of those in the next few months. Uh, we'll have for sure at least a month and a half to two months of really, really hard training, just to make sure we, we push the last final step. And then uh, get ready for the games in Tokyo, which we don't even know when we're going to leave to to Japan yet, uh, because there's so much around uh, logistics, uh, just getting to the game. So um, I guess we've learned to learn, well, we've learned to live with uncertainty during the past year and a half, which is still what we need to do in the next three months. So I think we're, we're ready for it, but we're excited that it will soon be over. <laughs> Yes, that's a really good description. I think everybody's been thinking that, but maybe they didn't say it. Like all this hype, just be done, right? <laughs> just yeah, just well, get there, let's do it. I mean, you you you're working for something. At, at one point, you you want to see the result. You want to you want to reach the end and go on yeah. to, to something else. And it doesn't matter if it's swimming or, or for me, uh, the, the thing that pushed me the most during the the, the pandemic was was getting back to school full time. Uh, I haven't been to school full time for many years. And for me, that was just a goal I wanted to 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 set myself just to make sure that, uh, well, swimming career is not going to last my entire lifetime. Like my body has a limit and I'm starting to realize that very, very quickly. Uh, so just making sure that I'm doing my best in something else at the same time is now very important to me, too. So. How, how do you keep that balance? School and swimming? I'd imagine that's a lot for you. So I, I guess... I, hmm, that's a good question because for many years, I thought it was too much. I thought that I couldn't do both and excel at both at the same time. And, and I was taking one or two courses a year or uh, for per semester and, and still keeping my, my full-time training schedule. And I thought it was enough, but I realized that I, I was just, I was able to do much more than that. And, and I just had to push myself to do it during, during COVID and, uh, actually studying something that I absolutely love and, and just making sure that like everything that I do at school is exactly the same as I will do it in the pool as, as best as I can, as, as precise as I can. And, and so far it's been success on, on both sides. And it's actually super rewarding because when one of those things don't go as planned or don't go as, as well as you think, well, you still have the other thing to focus on and to motivate yourself. And I think that's the thing that kept me really healthy mentally in the past year and a half is I always had that other thing I could look for if, uh, if my sport, if my school uh, didn't go uh, the way I wanted. So j just having that positive mindset, like always having something to, to reach out for. I think that's, that was the key to, to me staying healthy during the past uh, year and a half. Definitely. That's, I think that's so cool that, that you realized you needed more. I think a lot of people take on too much and then they're like, well, like, I don't know what to do. <laughs> yeah. But that's awesome that you saw that you had room for more and you wanted to take it on. And to be honest, like, yes, my schedule is, is pretty full with, with all of that, but it's so important to just find time for yourself in between all of that. So, so just having a five, 10 minute during the day of, of me doing what I absolutely want to do, which doesn't matter, just go for a walk or uh, I, I do some music at home. So, so play guitar or, or whatever, just something that completely empties my head of everything else. And I think that's what keeps me sane and keep everything balanced all together. Definitely. I saw that guitar in your Instagram bio. I was going to ask you about that. <laughs> what's that? What's up with that? <laughs> Yeah, so uh, I guess that was for many years the way I could just focus on myself and be very selfish. Is uh, like even not even my parents knew I was playing guitar when I started uh, high school, and they knew I had a guitar, but they didn't know how well I played or how I played at all. 
until I played them a concert. So I, it, it's always something that, I, again, just like swimming, I'm, I'm doing it like a recital. I, I want to make it perfect. Like my race is something that is very planned and, and making sure that it's perfect and, and as I want it to be, which so far I've been able to do in my career. And, and my music is, is basically the same thing. So it's something I kept for myself for, for, for a long time. And I decided to share a bit more uh, um, during the quarantine and push myself just to, to get out of my boundaries and, and do something a bit different. Definitely. I love it. Well, we talked about school. We've talked about your passion for music and everything. Let's go back into swimming for just a second. Um, can you just kind of, I guess, give me a rundown of your favorite highlights in your swimming career so far? I looked at your bio. You've swam, you've done lots of competitions, so I'm not sure what to ask you about right now. <laughs> yeah. But, um, uh, yeah. And to be moment. honest, for me, it's it's hard to tell what, like, the, well, I, I, I'd say the biggest highlight was the, the bronze medal in Rio that's that's hard to beat you dream about that for for so long and you you I mean you do everything to to go to the to reach that level and just getting on that podium in Rio in front of my family that was just the most rewarding thing ever and like to be honest you don't even think about the medal you just think about like what you had to do to to get to that level and it, and it's crazy it's like you get on the podium it's all flashbacks of you training waking up in the morning not wanting to go to practice, um, just doing stuff that normal kids won't do and just going to bed at eight when you're a teenager. That's like the last thing you, you'd, you'd want to do. So, uh, I mean, for me, all those sacrifices were worth it. So, yeah, I'd say that the medal in Rio, definitely a big highlight. Close second would be uh, the Pan American Games in, in Toronto 2015. That, like, just being home in Canada for me and having that crowd just getting you to the wall and and I, I guess that was my my big breakout international breakout meet and uh, managed to win uh, three gold and three silver medals uh many uh, america's record and, and just for me it was just so rewarding especially a year before rio that's just like exactly what you wanted and set you well for um for the big game so yeah uh, i mean i'd say those are are so far the two biggest highlights of my my swimming career yeah, I think those are two pretty good ones, right? Two pretty good moments for you. <laughs> yeah, pretty good. Pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Um, cool. So I guess this is more of a broad question for you, but you, you've talked about like pushing your body to the limit, right? All these hours of either sleeping really early or getting up really early, <laughs> testing yourself, right? So what's your motivation and like drive to do all this? Oh, it's it. Some people find it hard to find the motivation, but for me, it's just a reminder of my goal. I think sometimes you dream about something so much and you want it so bad that you just need to think about it a bit just to remind yourself that why you're actually putting your body through it, why you're taking the decision you're, you're taking. So so for me, it's really easy. The, the days I don't want to train, I just think about it. I just think about the experiences I've had in the past and what I could have in the future and just feeling humbled and, and lucky to be able to do what I do every day because because for me it's the best job ever I get to well not really travel the world especially not in the last year but but uh having the chance to represent my country to do the sport I like and just to to experience so many things that many people people won't have the chance to do in their lives like it's just Sometimes you just have to sit down and re realize you're very lucky and you're in the position where like you, like you, you, I guess you just have to, to take it all in and, and, and remind yourself that oh, it's, it's, it's a great life. It's a great way of living. <laughs> definitely. Definitely. No, that's a great answer. I, it's really interesting to see. I love that question because I like to see why people do it, you know, because I, we see the long hours and the hard the hardships and things that go into being a professional athlete and testing your body and your your mind you know and everything that happens but it's all worth it in the end it's all worth it which is so yeah fun. yeah exactly <laughs> cool uh, let's see last question for you um, I end all my shows on advice so what is one piece of advice you would give to younger Nick I think it would be to to hmm. I think it would just be to keep on going uh, and the hardest has already been done. If I, if I go to, to really young Nick, 
Nick Wu was afraid of the water. Nick Wu didn't want anything to do with swimming. Um, I'd say that basically our fears are just completely irrelevant. They're not funded. And, and that we just have to, to put our mind in a certain place where uh, we have to see what the risks are with, with what we're fearing. And, and I knew that there wasn't much danger in the water, actually. It was just afraid of some the things I didn't know. So making sure that I, I created myself a, a, a big barrier around me and, and just making sure that I, uh, I could be stronger than that. I, I, I can actually achieve so many things again if I can get over that barrier. And for me, in all of my swimming career, like the, the biggest hurdle I ever had to overcome was that was my, my fear of the water. And when that happened and when I was able to, to get over it, everything after that, which just came along. And, and I think coming from a different perspective today, I think that's all I needed to do as a kid, just to, to get better and to, and to improve on everything I'm, I'm trying to do in life, whatever it's swimming or relationships or, or at school and or in music I, I think that was just getting that drive getting trying to get out of your comfort zone or, or being comfortable in the uncomfortable I think that was that's what I would say to to a younger Nick definitely I love the theme of overcoming because that's like right at the very beginning like what you're saying and now so much has happened since that one one fear was overcome <laughs> yeah and and to be honest I think yes. it's helped me so much just to, to get over the whole pandemic as well. Mm -hmm. If you haven't lived through uncertainty in your life, it's completely overwhelming. And so many people have, have lived it in, in the past year that, and, and some people struggled and some people uh, succeeded. And, and I think that really was a good tool I had in my arsenal just to get over it. And, and for me, it was actually a smooth ride. It was an easy ride to get over it, but, but I know that if I didn't have those experiences in the past, it would have been a much, much harder time. Definitely. Very, very well said. I love that. That's a, a great note, I think, to end on with overcoming and all the great advice you've given. But Nick, thank you so much for taking some time out of your super busy schedule to speak with me and share your story. My pleasure, Aggie. <laughs> Nick, thank you so very much for coming on the show and sharing your story. We're all rooting for you as you work towards Tokyo in just a few months. Join us next week to hear from Vanessa Cristina. She's a Brazilian wheelchair racer, and she's going to tell us all about how much she loves her sport and why she does it. 